Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam and this is the Crafty Blinder van build. In today's video we start the mammoth task of upgrading all the lighting and adding a few trick lights as well. Morning. So while we've got the van at this stage I've decided that I'm going to put um, three looms in for spotlights. So this is the perfect time to do it. While I've got it all stripped out, I can run the cables nicely. I've got two going down here, and I've got a third one. I'm gonna try in a novel location. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, leave that, we'll leave that one to later. But we need to run the looms back through this area here. So we need to cut that tie there at the back. I think there's a big rubber sponge in there. We'll take that out. And that'll get us back through to the fuse board. So what we'll do is we'll put a rod through, grab the cables that we want, and pull them back this way. The majority of the looms are that side. So we'll pull what just what we need this side. I've got three pre-wired looms. Um, two we bought as kits, and one come with a set of spotlights that, I've, that I ordered. So all I'm doing is marking them up, looming them up, these are, this is the leg for the switch. This I'll be disconnecting. Um, obviously, we have our ends that need terminated. They're all labelled up as well. And let's get a look at this, all the outgoing. This is all the stuff that we're going to pull through into the bonnet. It's quite a length there, but I think once we've got it loomed up, it'll be, it'll be a lot easier. Last night I was looming these up. Put the tape down somewhere and I can't find it. Can't find it. Can't be too far away. Okay, just gonna show you what I've made here. So I bought three looms off the internet. Two looms off the internet, one come with a kit. So these are about I think they're about 10 quid. If I had to buy the parts of cable and all the time, it works out cheaper buying one of these. As long as you're not going to put a big heavy load on them, I'd recommend these. So what we've got here is, these go to the switch. So this will be inside the cab. This is your power side of it, all individually fused. So we'll put that to a supply as well. That'll be in the cab. And this leg here is the leg that goes into the engine bay. So what I've done is I've lashed all three together and created a loom. The same with the switches. So when we're threading this behind the dashboard, away from the switches, it's all gonna come as one. We can tie it back as one and it'll make a tidier job. You don't want lots and lots of cables hanging everywhere. So this is our loom. We've now got to put, a, put it through the bulkhead, so there is um, there's a cable tie to cut, a bung to take out, and then the cables to feed through from the cab. So what we'll do is we'll push a rod from this side through. Let's get on with it. We're going to cut this tie off here. This will allow us to get in to the cab. Let's that off. Right, we're going to need to warm that up a little bit. There we go. As soon as you see it start to move on its own, that's warm enough. All we need to do now is, ah, oh, that's better. Give that a good pull, open it up. So that gives us access now into the cab. Just need to put one of my rods through. Give a little twist as we're pushing it in. <clears throat> that doesn't want to go up. <laughs> right, that's it, we're through. So we're in the cab now. So we'll go the other side. 
and we'll lash on what we need to pull through. Okay, let me try and show you this. So you should be able to just see the end of it there, yeah? So what we'll do now is we'll feed that up. Not enough for us to work on now. Okay, the rod's here, but really we need it here. So what we'll do is we'll feed the cable in, up and onto this rod, and we'll tape it on up there. Rather than put it under any stress and duress, we want it to go out as easy as possible. So we'll just make sure that we haven't gone through any of these cables. We want to go around the back of them. We don't want to make life hard for us later on. So look in there, we've got a direct route out. So what I'm going to do now is feed up the cable behind here, up and out, tape it onto here so it'll go through straight. So the only way I can do that is with two hands, so I'll put you on the tripod. So just look behind there. What we're going to do is tape it on that way so when we're pulling it through it just feeds itself back in so start on the on the rod first that'll stop it from pulling off when we put a bit of pressure on it We are good to go now. So the thing to do is just push that through as far as you can with your hand. Right, catching now. I need to go back on the front and just ease it through. What we need to do is have the loom laid out in such a way when we pull it, it'll go through and it sh should hopefully not snag. Let's go and have a look. Hopefully, just pull that up there, keep it coming nice and steady, now if it stops, go and check the other side. It's just the second lot of cable ends coming through so they're through now go and check again Should be at the next lot. There we go. That is about what we do is make sure there's enough on it to go 
both sides of the vehicle. So all I'm doing now is I'm pushing the seal back into situ. Because we've pulled a little bit of it through when we're pulling the cables. No, it's like a it's like a sponge material. But um and it compresses, I think it seals up as well. So we'll work that back in. That's it back into place. I'm happy with that. Yeah, we did pretty well there. There's all the relays. Now I have to find somewhere to mount all this gear. Okay, we'll start with the switches. Set them behind there. Excuse it out of the way. I hadn't really given a lot of thought into where I was going to mount the relays beforehand so I took a little bit of time out did a couple of other jobs while I thought about how I would do this job so there's the loom in it's all cable tied back we've kept one at the top because that's for another job we have just loomed it along the existing loom and just run it down here with the camera cable so we're just sitting here now but we're going to put the lights back in and then there's no need for them to come back out again while we're in there we spread some shuts down the back of there the back of there and on top of these bits here we're just starting to look a bit sorry for this house yeah, really productive day. Well, storms are back. Short lived. We had a nice break in the weather yesterday. And I took full advantage of it. I've done the front bumper, the wheel arches. Um, yeah. It's not good this weather. How fast them clouds are moving. Okay, we've found a, an inside job. We're gonna try and run these switches across now. I'll show so you what I've done. So, the other day I was playing around with this area here. Let's see if we can get a better shot of this. So you can see, it comes with slots in. Now I started removing these top ones, just so I could put the banks of switches in. Um, I've got three to go in there so far. I think I maybe need to take the fourth spar out. And we might need to make up a piece for the end, just like little fillers. But we'll have a look at it now, see how it is, and we'll feed the switches through. We can always 
we can always come back to that but we'll, yeah we'll put the looms through now I've got the radio out and I've got the dash exposed so we'll run the cables through um, I've already made a loom as I said it's just a matter now of getting it to where it needs to be Good idea on my part, I think. <laughs> now can I get it off? <clears throat> Somebody once told me Yes, that's ideal. The only thing that makes sure that we don't interrupt or foul anything. Spot on. Bit of a schoolboy error. I've wrote <laughs> I've wrote A and A on the wrong side. I put C and C C. I thought it plugged inside. I've made a bit of a bit of an error. These markings have nothing on them. So what I'm going to have to do is go out and bell these cables out, and then individually mark them up. What a plonker! This won't be happening today. It's too wet to go out there and do this. way too wet so this is a little bit tricky to film so in the back of these switches once you pop these out this is what you'll find there is a spar behind that holds the flank in place stopped it falling through the back really because our new switches are slightly larger we don't need them spars so we've got to cut them out. So basically all I've been doing is cutting it. <laughs> it says try not to drop it again. So all I've been doing is basically cutting it okay, There you go And then just snapping off the top That leaves quite a quite a lump there. So what we'll do is I'll nibble a bit more of that away. I don't know if you can see that. Now we've got the top off. That should just bend over. So it is quite a big bit of plastic. It's about 12, 15 mil deep. So once you've got them out, it's then just a matter, I don't know if you can see there, we have a rough aluminium file and we just take that lip down. There's a tiny little lip there. This is really hard to show you, but let me get as close as I can. So yeah, we just need to take that lip off there. So we'll just file it flat like we have done on these. And then everything should fit in. This is an aluminium file and it's perfect for knocking back plastic. OK, 
Okay, so we've filed this out, we've tidied it all up. It's just now a matter of fitting the switches. They come with like a little neoprene rubber seal on them. So I'm leaving that on. Um, just in case that stops it from any squeaks or rattles coming off the switches. Um, there's a little gap on the edge what I'll do is I'll measure that and what we'll do is we'll get one of these blanks we'll trim it down to the right width and we'll glue it to the side Turn that around so there's a little gap that I'm on about I'll make a piece to sit in there Okay, we've made a little filler there now for that piece. We're just going to hot glue it in. Wish me luck. So it doesn't look too bad. I just need to dress up that glue later on. And it's gone off. And that should be alright. A little bit of glue slipped through. What I'll do is when everything's dried off and it's set, I'll just run a slamly blade through there. Is it up? Takes your eye off it anyway. I'm happy with it. A little thing like that, and it took a lot of effort. <laughs> I've just been sanding it for about the last half hour. I like these switches. Tidy. So rather than building a big bracket there, I'm going to mount the relays on here. In the in the end, if the relays fail, you know, I'm going to have to strip out this little bit here. But the chance of the relays failing on spot lumps, it's few and far between. So for that little bit of inconvenience, I'm, I've mounted them here. I'm going to put a cable tie around them um, so they don't come loose. It's an old trick we learned from rallying, cable tie them in and they don't have a tendency to bounce out. So just loop the cable tie around, we'll find a gap in the cables and we'll pull it through. Yeah, just a quick trick. I've dressed the slack up from the cable so the loom comes along the bottom of that loom then just loops back around underneath and here because we have quite a bit of slack on the switch, on the switch um, loom switch side of the loom so we've only gone to there so we had a good two foot left now this is a perfect area to hide it all and um, we can put it in there and keep it keep it tidy we'll drop this back down when we're finished and that'll just cover it all up nicely stop it rattling on anything we'll uh, we'll keep it off the relays we'll tuck it around the back let the relays have a bit of room to Allow the heat to dissipate. But yeah. Shouldn't be too much of a hassle. I'd attempted to fit some blue crimps onto these small switch wires. These actually run from the relay, so they don't need to be that heavy. Uh, in reality, I needed red ones. But I tried it, and when I belled the cables out before putting everything back together, it didn't work. <laughs> So I wasted my time when I really should have just gone with the red ones in the beginning. So, do the job right. Okay, so we put a cable tie round and it pulls on the back of the joint. Uh, and then we just wrap another cable tie round and that'll pull everything in place. It stops from working loose or causing any problems with the loose connection. Might be overkill, but it works. <laughs> I don't plan on coming into this area too often, so I want to do what I need to do and then I can just put it all away. We've bailed out these connections now, so we have our switches in. We've got our connections done, we've got our relays mounted. We just need to make sure all that goes back together now. So got... Covers in the back, I've got to go and 
do we? So we'll just make sure the cover goes back on and doesn't interfere with anything. Perfect. Now we just need to deal with the power supply. So this is the end of our first video in the lighting upgrade series. We're going to fit spotlights, we're going to fit an override switch for the reversing lights, and we're even going to fit a light on the sliding door and some perimeter lighting. Thank you for your continued support. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing, liking, and sharing with your friends. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.